Greetings, this is Paul the Poke from paulthepoke.com. Today's topic, trend update, ancient church discovery near Monbij, Syria. And we are June 19, 2018. This actually came from uh, about a month ago. Been sitting on this, hadn't had a chance to get to it. We're going to focus up in the northern part of Syria, east of Aleppo and just west of the Euphrates River. Um... Monbij, Syria is the location. So we'll back this up a little bit. And we'll get those two in there. Scripture references out of Matthew 16, verses 17 through 18. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Um, and the reference is this. ISIS continues to be removed from the landscape of the Middle East, this time in Monbij, Syria. ISIS previously used a site as a place to dump trash. Little did they know. So the location was a hiding place for ancient Christians. Archaeologists think the site may have been an ancient church. The, quote, hidden church is believed to be from the 3rd or 4th century. The site is located 18 miles west of the Euphrates River. And here's the Euphrates River here. West of the Euphrates is Monbij. Uh, Christian symbols and writings were cut into stone, tunnels, places or of worship, and escape routes were contained within the site and the inscriptions um they were written in greek and this is a quote from john wineland professor of history and archaeology at southeastern university greek was the common language of the eastern roman empire which explains why the new testament is written in greek during the roman period now they've not been able to do a complete and thorough dig and the study is not expected until later due to mines placed from the civil war in Syria. And there's also possibly a second location uh, found as well in and around these areas. Now, the thinking is this area used to be predominantly Christian. You know, we're talking back third and fourth century. And as ISIS gets removed, they're hoping to find more and more Christian artifacts. Now, if you want much more detail, I just gave you the highlights of the article. Go to www.foxnews.com, Ancient Christian Ruins Discovered Under Former ISIS-Held Territory. Um, now, the focus, you know, going back to the to the verses in Matthew, there's a lot of controversy over these verses. And, the, you know, and the thing I would argue, and specifically it has to do with... Uh, and I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. That that phrasing within those two verses has caused lots of controversy. So, and I would ask people, ignore the divisiveness of these arguments that have been brought. Read the text for yourself and understand it. Jesus is talking to Peter, and he clarifies that he is talking to Peter. Jesus makes the point to use two different words. And the two key nouns are, are the nouns Peter and rock. They are two distinctive terms in the Greek. Uh, and that's why I break a lot of this stuff down in the Greek. It's just like, um, you know, the professor of history and archaeology states, the New Testament's written in Greek. So, you know, in order to understand this stuff, we need to have a, you know, an understanding of what's being said in that language to, to have, to have an idea. Um, and Peter and rock are different terms. They're distinctive in gender and in definition. So, for example, let's look at Peter or Petros. It's masculine in gender. And it means a detached stone. Emphasis on the word detached. Properly, a stone or a pebble, such as a small rock found along a pathway. Peter, a Greek name meaning rock. Petros, the word in Greek, small in stature. And we're going to compare that to the word Petra or rock. Now, Petra is feminine in gender as opposed to Petros was masculine. Petra means a mass of connected rock. 
solid or native rock rising up through the earth, a huge mass of rock or a boulder, such as a projecting cliff. Petra is large in stature. Petros, small in stature. Uh, now, these definitions were provided by Strong's Concordance and helps word studies. You know, take this a little bit further. The rock, Petra, is connected together. It's a massive rock. It's a boulder as it, the church is the body of Christ. So, and taking the analogy further, looking at 1 Corinthians 12, verses 26 and 27. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. So Petra, it's a mass. It's connected rock. It's not a single rock like Peter is isolated and individual. Petros, Peter is not a big deal in comparison to the cornerstone of the church. Petros, Peter, pales in size relative to the rock or Petra of the church. I mean, it's two different words. And Jesus predicted and promised his body and bride, the church, in this phrase as well. So this is long before the church began in Pente at Pentecost. And it's the, the typical Greek word used for church in the New Testament writings. It's ecclesia. And it means an assembly, congregation, church. The church, the whole body of Christian believers. And, you know, take all the, the mystery out of it. Uh, Jesus says it himself, himself, I will build my church. Jesus is the architect and builder of the church. Jesus takes possession. He declares the church belongs to him, you know, therefore the possessive pronoun my. And oh, by the way, Isis and whoever else wants to try to stop it and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, the church. So if you're interested in this topic, please feel free to check out paulthepoke.com. Uh, keywords, church, Matthew 16, Jesus, uh, Monbij, Syria, ISIS, and so forth. Appreciate you guys listening. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.